Hello health champions. Today we're going to talk about the fasting mimicking diet. That is how you can still eat a little bit while still getting most of the benefits of fasting. So we're going to talk about what the fasting mimicking diet traditionally is, but we're also going to try to understand it and see how we can improve it. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So the fasting mimicking diet is a thing. It's a patented method and it was developed by Walter Longo. He's got a PhD and he's been doing research for a long time. He's originally from Italy, but he's in California for the most part. And he's been doing a lot of research on fasting and aging and nutrition and how calorie restriction and different metabolites and hormones affect these different variables. And in that process, he came up with a way where you can get most of the benefits of fasting while still eating a little bit. And this is a big step forward because a lot of people need the benefits of fasting, but a lot of people are not willing to go on a five-day water fast. They're not capable or ready mentally to make that shift. So what the fasting mimicking diet says is that you can get the same benefits, which are basically you can lower blood glucose, you can lower blood pressure, you can reduce insulin, you can reduce triglycerides, you can reduce inflammation, all of these measured on blood work, and it is very powerful in losing weight. And all of these are of course involved with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. So if you find a way to reduce insulin resistance to unclog the body, to stop the clogging process, then you're going to get a lot of these benefits. And the method was in large part originally developed for treatment of cancer or for part of treatment for cancer. So it is inducing and maintaining autophagy, which has been shown to be able to reduce cancer, prevent, reverse cancer, etc. So here's the principle of that diet is that you reduce your calories dramatically for about five days. And during that time, you also reduce the carbs, you reduce the protein, and you increase the fat. So you're going to eat 800 calories and 47% of those are going to be carbs. Only 9% are going to be protein and 44% are going to be fat. So now you're going to say, depending on what your background is, if you never heard of low carb or keto, you're going to say that, oh, well, that sounds interesting. If you've already done a lot of keto and low carb, you go, oh my God, what do you mean low carb? That's sky high carb. And that's true. So when they say that this is low carb, low protein, high fat, that's relative to the standard American diet because that promotes 60 or more percent of calories from carbohydrate. So when we take them down to 47, then that's lower. And when we increase the fat to 44, that's more than the 30% that's recommended. So we all have to put this in perspective. And we have to realize that most of these, this method, these benefits are for people who have never made any changes before. So in terms of grams, what this means is you would eat about 94 grams of carbs, 18 grams of protein and 39 grams of fat. And again, if you've done low carb and keto, then you're going to go, that's not low carb. That's like three, four times the carbs that I eat. So we all have to remember that and, and put that in perspective. So the biggest change, the main difference that the most radical departure from any diet is the low protein. And there's a reason for that. And it is that you have all these different nutrient sensors in the body. You have the, the insulin and you have the mTOR and the AMPK and so forth. And they respond differently to different macronutrients. 
and if we can get the ratios right, then we can maintain, we can induce, we can maintain and we can sustain autophagy. So basically, the number one thing that turns off autophagy is protein. So autophagy is the recycling mechanism, the cleanup. It, it's a very powerful healing and detox and repair mechanism that we have in the body. But it's primarily response to protein. So the whole deal with this fasting mimicking diet is that you can maintain autophagy even if you eat 800 calories as long as your proteins are very low. So that's the key that we have to have in mind. So then the idea is that you do this for five days per month. So in the beginning, uh, assuming that you're going from just any old diet, whatever, that had got you sick in the first place, then for five days you eat 800 calories with this macro arrangement and then you do that three times. So for five days you eat low carb, then the rest of the month you eat so-called normal and you do that three months and then once you've gone through it for three months you probably have reversed a lot of these markers and then you can go back to eating your normal diet and then you maintain your health by doing this once every three months or once every six months depending on what your lifestyle is and what your tendencies are for insulin resistance and weight gain and so forth. So part of this patent and part of this whole idea is that you can also buy a package. You can order a package and you pay some money and you get everything that you're going to eat for that period of time. And the advantage is that you get the exact calories, you get the exact macronutrients, you get the exact proportions, and you don't have to think about it. There's no learning curve. You just open up the box and you do what it says. So it's very, very convenient. But now the question is though, is it optimal? Is this really the absolute best way to do this, which we're going to talk about, and is it cost effective? So this just depends on where are you on your learning curve? Are you willing to spend the money or are you willing to learn? If you have a little bit of money, you don't mind spending it and you are not willing to take the time to learn, then go for the package because you're going to be able to get a lot of these benefits without changing a whole lot of other things. But on the question if it's optimal, I would argue that it's not and that we can, by being willing to learn, which is why you're watching this channel in the first place, by will, being willing to learn, we can enhance this. We can do it at a much lower cost and we can get even better results. So really what the package is about, it's getting some or getting significant benefit with the least amount of change and learning, right? So it's not a bad thing. I, it's awesome because the vast majority of the population have never heard of low carb or nutrition or whole food and they're not there yet. So this is a great entry place for those people. But if you're willing to learn a little more, then we can take it one step further. So I want to talk about how we can make this even better. How do we get the optimum benefit and how do we spend less money and how do we maintain it? How do we not just go for some benefit but we go for the optimal long-term benefit, right? So if we combine keto or low carb, high fat, if we have the body fat adapted already when we do the fasting mimicking diet, then we're going to be in a much, much better place. So here's what that would look like. So the calories on a typical keto diet would be about 2000. And then we have about 5% carbs, 20% protein and 70% of calories from fat. And this is going to vary depending on the size of the person, anywhere from 1500 to 3500 maybe. The carbs are going to vary maybe from 5% or from 0% to 10%. So these are just rough numbers, but you get the idea. 
If we convert that to grams on a traditional ketogenic diet, we're going to be maybe 25 grams of fat, 100 grams of protein, and 150, 170 grams of fat. Now, if we take that, if we take the fasting mimicking diet a little step further, and remember that they, they came up with these numbers probably because it's better than the standard diet, right? They have to do certain things to get results without rocking the boat too much, right? It's a step in the right direction. And to avoid a lot of the controversy, they probably decided that people are used to having their carbs. So if we let them eat a little bit of carbs, then they're going to feel more like normal. But what I would suggest is if we take this with a keto approach, then we take it down to 800 calories and we keep our 25 grams of carbs that we are accustomed to in our ketogenic diet. So whatever you're doing, just keep doing that if you're on keto. If not, then learn some of the keto stuff before and we got lots of videos for that. And then the protein is going to be the big change. It's going to go from 100 grams down to 18 grams because we're reducing both the number of calories and the percentage. So this is the key. This is the reason the fasting mimicking diet works is the very low amount of protein that is going to sustain the autophagy. It's going to allow you to eat some food but still be in autophagy. And with autophagy you get all those anti-aging benefits, you get the healing benefits, you get the stem cell benefits and so forth. And then the fat is going to be a very high percentage at 78%, but the total amount will be lower because we're eating less food. So if you're already fat adapted, which would be awesome, then you're not going to have any problem still eating one or two meals a day if you've done some intermittent fasting. And that's why it's so such a good idea to be in keto and low carb, high fat before, and if you've done intermittent fasting, then this is going to be such a smooth transition. If you go straight from a standard American diet into doing the fasting mimicking diet, then you're probably going to be able to suffer through the five days. You're going to tell yourself, I can do five days, but you'll feel miserable while your body is transitioning and getting into fat burning and so forth. But if you're already fat burning, it's going to be really smooth. So let's expand a little bit on the benefits. We have, we talked about these benefits of fasting that we're going to still get most of them with the fasting mimicking. But what's the benefit of doing the keto mod modified, the, the keto fasting mimicking diet as opposed to regular fasting mimicking diet? Well, if you get fat adapted first, then you're going to have a much easier transition and you're going to get deeper levels of autophagy and insulin reduction in insulin resistance. So we want to understand that insulin resistance and autophagy is not a switch that you flip. It's not an on and off thing. It's a gradual thing. You have more or less of it. Even people on a standard American diet are going to have a some amount of autophagy. This, that's just how the body cleans up. But you're going to have many, 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 many times more autophagy, which is what we're looking for if you do the fasting. Here we're just looking to increase the benefits to get a higher percentage of benefit. So if we think about this as insulin resistance uh, on these two graphs, then if you're doing the standard American diet, if you sort of think that if you don't want to learn anything and you just think, hey, I'm going to eat normal, which is high carb, whatever they recommend, and then I'm going to suffer for five days, then you're going to get a yo-yo thing. You're, you're going to get some benefits, but then in between, you're basically just going to eat enough garbage again, enough uh, insulin stimulating food to offset the benefits. You're not going to get a huge amount of long-term improvement. So the red would be insulin resistance that while you're eating normal, 
you are still sort of promoting insulin resistance and then you do your five-day fasting mimicking and you get some insulin sensitivity, you get some autophagy, some benefits, but then you go right back. So the fasting mimicking is just enough to offset the other bad stuff that you do. Whereas if you do a low carb, if you're already reversing insulin resistance, then the, you're already below the, the line. You're not promoting insulin resistance at any time in the month. Now you're going to get a much, much deeper effect. You're going to have it for a longer period of time. You're going to get into it much quicker because you're basically already there. And the total benefit, the amount of reversing insulin resistance is going to be much larger and now you are not just compensating for what the bad stuff that you do, you're actually moving toward long-term health. And if we imagine a similar scenario for autophagy, then it would be almost the same, except that autophagy would be present to a lesser degree. That if you're eating your standard high-carb processed food, regular food diet, then you would just barely get in. It would take you a few days to get into. So you're doing this for five days. It probably takes you a good two days, three days even, to get into a significant amount of autophagy. And then you go right back to eating and now you're kind of undoing that and you're just getting ready for the next five days to, to recover. Whereas if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're eating two or three meals, you're probably not in a ton of autophagy, but you're, you get more autophagy than if you ate a, a high carb diet. During the time that you're fasting, you're not so far away from the autophagy. So you're more likely to have some degree of autophagy in the mornings, for example, when before you eat. So now, instead of having two, three days to get into autophagy, you're probably in autophagy within 12, 18, 24 hours because you're so close already and now you can spend almost the entire five days just building on that momentum and then when you get back out you're not instantly undoing all the good that you did. So why would we do fasting mimicking as opposed to just plain fasting? Because fasting is still going to get you all these benefits and it will be even better. But here's why the fasting mimicking diet is better than a water fast. And the number one thing obviously is that it's easier. It's more acceptable for most people. And even if you're already fat adapted, it's still easier because it's not such a mental barrier to, to get into it. You know if you're going to be able to eat a little bit, then you could probably go five days instead of maybe two or three days on a water fast. So you go longer and therefore you get more of the autophagy benefits with less effort, so to speak. And if it's easier, then you can also do it more often. So if you just sort of had the, the mental strength to do a water fast of three days every couple of months, now maybe you can do it once a month and not really feel that it's much pressure. And the other issue is about weight. So if you have a ton of weight to lose, then you're gonna lose weight faster on the water fast. But if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, and if you want some of these autophagy benefits. So for me, it's hard to do a lot of long three, four, five day water fast because I sort of have to eat myself up. I have to gain back the weight between each time. But if I do a fasting mimicking diet, then there is less weight loss because I'm putting in some calories. I'm putting in maybe roughly half or close to half of my usual calories. So the weight loss will be a lot less. It'll be easier to maintain it longer and do it more often. And I still get that sustained autophagy benefit. And like I said, the key to understand is it that it's the protein that you have to watch. You get better results if you watch the carbs as well, but it's the protein that's the key. You've got to keep that down, which means 
that this is basically a vegan diet. For these five days, you're going to be vegan because virtually every animal product is going to have too much protein to keep you within that 18 to 20 gram range. So I would suggest that you get yourself your glucose meter and your ketone meter and you give this a try. You start tracking, you start measuring and you see how these numbers compare and you'll probably find that your ketone will be really good. Your glucose ketone ratio will be really good even though you're eating some calories. So you'll be able to sustain your autophagy. You'll be getting most of these benefits even while eating a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you also take a look at that one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.